Ever wondered how to boot ISOs directly from your local hard disk without transferring them over to your USB drive? Well, in this video, I'll show you the magic of Ventoy's V-Link feature, making your multi-boot USB setup easier and more efficient than ever. So you never have to worry about running out of capacity on the USB drive, because we're just going to create a link that allows you to boot from an ISO or an image or a WIM file, you name it, that lives on your local hard drive, as opposed to copying over to that USB. Let's jump right in, guys. Really quick, before we dive in, guys, do me a favor. Check out my shop at bootableusbs.com. Some of the greatest USBs ever assembled. If you're a techie, if you're a geek, if you're into IT, maybe you work in the space, I think you're going to like what you see there. Totally customized, has everything you'll ever need for IT. Give it a look and let me know what you think. All right, let's go. So first thing you need to do, if you don't have Ventoy installed, just download that. It's very small. I'll give you the link to this download. If you're running Windows, get the zip and then just extract it. That's exactly what I've done here. This is the contents of the Ventoy zip file. First thing you'll have to do is run the Ventoy to disk. This is the main executable that actually installs Ventoy on the USB drive. I've already done it, but I'll go ahead and overwrite it just to start fresh. If you have Ventoy on there, you'll be prompted with yes. If you don't, you'll just have to accept these prompts. Just make sure you have the correct drive here, guys. Very important because Ventoy does wipe out the disk. So make sure you either have a blank flash drive or a flash drive that you don't care about the contents and or you've already backed everything up. It only takes a few seconds to get going here, guys. Once that's done, you should see in your file explorer now that your label of your flash drive is Ventoy and it will be empty. I like to start out by creating a couple folders to organize things. I should say three folders in this case. ISO. Now this would be if we wanted to copy any ISOs locally to the drive. Uh, we're not going to do that in this case because this is a demonstration to show you how VLink works. But again, just kind of giving you a standard uh, best practice in my recommendation of how to configure things with a Ventoy USB. Ventoy, I always set this one up. Got to spell it right though. Uh, this is for your Ventoy configuration. If you've watched any of my other videos, if you haven't, I uh, encourage you guys to watch them. I show you how to customize the crap out of these Ventoy USBs from icons to backgrounds to themes, folder structures, all kinds of cool stuff. Persistence. This is where the uh, configuration for that lives. It creates a Ventoy.json file along with some other stuff. But again, I won't dive too deep into that now. Just kind of giving you guys a, a recommendation on how to structure your folders. All right. And then last but not least, I'm going to create a folder called local disk. This is all optional, guys. This V-Link will work without any of this stuff. But when we boot to the USB, we'll get into what we call tree view. And it just adds a layer of organization to your uh, file structure within Ventoy. I hope it makes more sense once we boot in there. I think it will. All right, guys. So from here, the next thing we have to do is download some ISOs. So I've already went ahead and did that. I created a folder on my local hard drive here called C download. You can call it whatever you want. And this is optional. Again, you can put these wherever you want, but when we run VLink, we do have to point to these files. So I've downloaded four different Linux just distribution image files. And next thing we have to do, we're almost there actually. So the next thing we need to do now is just launch the Ventoy VLink. So if we go back to our C Ventoy folder or wherever you extracted this again, guys, and this time, instead of running the Ventoy to disk, run the Ventoy VLink executable. And all you need to do here, guys, is hit create. Okay, once you hit create, browse to that folder where your ISOs are, and you're just going to click on these one at a time. You can't do multiples, at least I didn't find a way to do multiples, without using the command line. Uh, you could do that if you want, but it's pretty easy just to click through this. So again, go to where you put those ISOs and just double click the first one. There you go. It's created your V-Link for that. All right, we're going to do it again. I'm, gonna do, I'm just going to repeat the process for all four of these. Perfect. So now we have all of our VLink files, and they, by default, go into the same directory from where you ran that VLink. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to copy all these, and then I'm going to put that on my flash drive under my local disk. And I will take it a step further here, guys. I'm going to create another folder called C. Again, totally optional. And then under here, I'm going to create download to mimic that file structure that I have on my computer. Because think about it, if you scale this out and you have a whole bunch of stuff in different directories, it helps to have it organized, in my opinion. Okay, so now I will paste in my VLink files. And that's it. You are ready to rock and roll, guys. And just a 
a note here. If you read through the VLink documentation, you can combine this with things like persistence and custom configurations and VHD. It supports all of that. You'll just need to set it up accordingly. Just read the documentation. It is pretty straightforward. The folks that take care of Ventoy and keep this up to date do a great job with the documentation. But let me know if you have specific questions. I'd be glad to, to help you out and maybe make another demo to walk you through this. They even made like a gift to walk through uh, what they've done here. So anyways, let's go ahead and boot to this USB drive. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with TreeView and we'll boot into one of these ISOs. Before we do that though, guys, let's take a look real quick at just how much space we are using on this flash drive. Absolutely zero for the most part. We've just created some links and some folders, but yet we're gonna have the ability to boot to four ISOs and that could be 400 ISOs, right? Without actually copying anything onto the flash drive. So if you guys have checked out my shop, maybe you've purchased a USB for me. If you have, hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that support, guys. Uh, this is a way to expand upon that. Maybe you're like, hey, this is amazing, but I have some other ISOs or some other WIMs or VHDs that I want to be able to boot from, but I'm just out of capacity and I'm not looking to, to clean anything off of this USB. Well, now you can grow this thing endlessly with a V-Link that allows you to boot stuff from a hard drive. So let's go ahead and reboot this and we'll test the, uh, we'll walk through the folder structure and then we'll test booting. So I'm using a virtual machine. That's why it looks really small here because obviously pre-boot, you don't have any VMware tools installed. Uh, just make sure you hit that hotkey on your keyboard, whatever it is in your case, to get to your boot menu. And here I see my USB drive as an option. So I'm gonna hit that. And here's my Ventoy boot menu. Now by default, it just parses through this drive automatically and it pulls out any bootable images. Uh, when I build these myself, I always default it to tree view, and I'm going to hit F3 to do that now. But if you guys have ever seen the ones I build, uh, I have a ton of stuff on there, sometimes 50, 60 images. So it's a mess when you look at it like that. So I always default mine through the configuration JSON to tree view. So it would look something like this, but I'd have, you know, I have custom uh, backgrounds, custom icons and things like that. Won't go too deep into that. Just know that uh, mine are pretty legit. So if you go to the uh, local disk, this is the folder structure we set up, C drive, download. Now we have all these uh, V-links. And it actually shows the size of the ISO, but remember we didn't actually put the ISO on the flash drive. So just with that V-link alone, we can boot to any of these OSs. So let's go ahead and try Mint for instance. All right, there it is, guys. Linux Mint is booted up, but this is it. I mean, this is very responsive, and we don't have anything on the flash drive besides those little VLink relation files that just point to the ISO on the hard disk of the underlying hardware. So I think this is very cool. I had one of my um, followers, one of the people in the community, ask to make a video on this. I knew about this already, but I won't lie, I wasn't using this. I, I may start to use this. I guess the only caveat really is you have to be on that same computer or you have to carry around that secondary hard drive, which isn't a bad idea. Maybe you've run out of capacity on your Ventoy USB and you can just carry around another flash drive or an external SSD or whatever the case is and then V-Link the USB with Ventoy onto that one if you wanted to. But if you're doing this just for like uh, testing and lab and trying out different operating systems and you're not necessarily using your Ventoy stick so much to go to different places like customers and things like that. You could do a combination of both really though, right? I guess what I'm trying to say is wherever these V-Link files are configured, like the pointers to point to something, obviously you're going to have to have that in place when you boot to it. So hopefully that all makes sense for you guys. All right. This was just a quick demonstration on the Ventoy V-Link. So now you don't have to worry about running out of capacity on your Ventoys. And you can uh, easily boot from any ISO, WIM, VHD, you name it, on your local hard disk without having to copy stuff over to your USB. Let me know if you guys knew about this. Uh, let me know if you guys are using this. And also, let me know if you guys have any questions about this. Before we go, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, leave me a comment. And if you haven't done so already, I appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel. We are trying to hit 10K this year. It's going to be a uh, close call, I think. I think we'll get very close to it. I think we'll be in the nines if we don't crack 10. Either way, I'm not going to stop until we get there, guys. 
All right. One more thing. Like I said, when we when we set this up, it's very cool as far as functionality, but it kind of looks plain Jane. Check out my shop, bootableusbs.com. If you want to see some of the greatest USBs ever constructed, in my opinion, in the world, I haven't seen anything better. Uh, this is my opinion. Maybe I'm biased, but hey, check them out. I think these things are amazing. A lot of bang for your buck. And I do all the heavy lifting, research, configuration, all that stuff. So you get a pre-packaged Swiss Army knife, jam-packed. And now you have another tool in your tool belt, if you do pick one of those up, to expand this endlessly with V-Link. So you can continue to boot to anything that you download and put on your hard drive. All right, guys. I hope you all have a great day. And until the next video, everybody take care.